The story continues. Seeing Kenji come out of the room, everyone was surprised, but no one was more surprised than Shin. He started panicking while asking everyone why Kenji was there, and where were his two lackeys. He asks Du Park what was going on. Kenji asks him if he is scared of fighting him. Shin smiles at him saying he is nothing more than a coward who brought his gangster uncles to ambush him. To which Kenji replies that he was doing the same thing to Song Jun, trying to ambush him. Kenji challenges him to fight him one on one. Shin attacks him while yelling he is just a loser nothing more. But Kenji easily avoids his attack and uses his technique pickaxe. Shin had to back down after getting hit by his attack because the pain was unbearable. But Shin couldn't stand how Kenji was so carefree while fighting him. He attacked Kenji with his dominant hand this time which was his left hand. But this time as well, Kenji dodges his punch without much effort and calls him slow. Kenji grabs his hand and uses his monstrous grip strength while Shin tries his best to get out of his hold. Kenji uses another technique, laundry squeeze, and elbows him. Shin screams in pain and Song Joon compliments Kenji's techniques. The seniors were also impressed by his fighting style. Shin starts making excuses saying he was already injured from fighting Song Joon earlier so it'd be impossible for him to fight again. Kenji says he was full of words. Seeing Kenji looking down on him, Shin decides to take out the knife he was planning to use on Song Jung, but now he had no choice but to use it on Kenji. Kenji says that using a knife was going too far, but seeing Kenji getting scared, Shin charged toward Kenji. But before he could hit him, the second uncle announced on the mic that using a knife in a one-on-one -on -one fight was prohibited. Shin was shocked to see the second uncle there, and wondered what he was doing there. His two lackeys were also there sitting there with their heads shaved. The second uncle orders him to throw the knife and start fighting again. Shin tells the second uncle the same thing, how he was already injured and that it wasn't a fair fight. Then he sees the two guys sitting beside the second uncle. At first, he wonders who are those ugly guys, but then he realizes they are his lackeys. He remembers how the second uncle had warned him not to use any tricks. Kenji asks Song Joon to hit him just like he did Shin so that they'd be on the same level. That way, Shin wouldn't have any more excuses to not fight him. Song Jing is hesitant at first but when Kenji insists, he hits him with a solid punch to the face. The second uncle and the others were baffled to see that. Seeing his modness, Shin felt shivers down his spine. The seniors concluded that he was much more suited to become the boss of the school. When Shin doesn't attack him, Kenji charges instead. Shin thought he just needed to keep his distance from him, but much to his surprise, Kenji jumped onto him not giving him any chance to escape. The second uncle was also surprised because he didn't teach him any ground technique. Even though Kenji managed to grab him but he didn't know what to do next, so he just started to squeeze his wrist. The others were slightly disappointed in him, but they didn't understand why Shin was acting like he was being strangled. Kenji remembers all the devious things Shin had done to him, and how because of him, Sujin left him as she was into bad boys now. Shin screams in pain and tells him that gives up. But it was too late not. Kenji couldn't stop himself now. He starts punching him again and again, asking him how it feels to be powerless. But instead of begging him, Shin calls him a loser who would be worthless without the backing of the gangsters. The whole gym echoes with the sound of his punches. He was hitting him for all the people Shin bullied and they couldn't do anything about it. Song Jun stops Kenji as Shin is already out of consciousness. Kenji couldn't contain his anger and screamed out loud while crying. The seniors make fun of him for crying even though he was the one hitting. Shin's friends realize that they were no match for him. They start arguing about who should be the new boss of the school after Shin. While they were arguing with each other, Kenji informed them that it was pointless for them to fight among themselves as he was going to beat all of them from now on anyway. They told him that he was being full of himself just after winning one fight. But one of the Super Alliance executives intervenes and introduces himself to him. But Kenji disrespects him saying he didn't like those guys. The executives were getting angry. Kenji goes on to say that he was going to beat the Super Alliance as well. Outside the gym, the first and the third uncle were waiting. The third uncle asked him about his injury as well. The first uncle told him how the other factions in the gang had started to make their move. They have gotten the wind of Kenji's existence. They'd have to let the public know of his existence as well if they wanted to survive at this point. Inside the gym, the Super Alliance executive warns him that he won't be able to walk out alive after saying such a thing about the Alliance. But Kenji didn't care about anything. The guy challenges Kenji to a fight, and Kenji immediately agrees to it. The second uncle signals Du Park, and he stops them from fighting. Du Park told them that Kenji was high on adrenaline. Everything he says would sound aggressive at this point in time. The guy agrees to leave for now after Du Park insists. The other seniors didn't like his rude behavior towards the Alliance as well 
but they didn't cause any more drama and left. The guys from their high school couldn't accept Kenji as their new boss and retaliated. Du Park told them if they didn't like it they'd have to face Song Jung and himself. Even though they were furious, none of them dared to move forward and left in anger. They were frustrated after the one they thought of as a loser humiliated them and now would be their boss. But one of the guys named Kim Yong told them the one who got humiliated the most was Shin. They'd have to just wait for the moment and their time would definitely come. After everyone leaves, Song Jung asks Kenji if he's feeling all right. I thought I'd feel good after beating Shin Ji Yong up with my own hands. I thought I'd feel relieved, said Kenji. But it was way different from what he had imagined. When he was beating up someone who wasn't able to defend himself, he felt like a bad person. Song Ju reminded him that he wasn't just someone. It was Shin, and he deserved it. And isn't that what you wanted? To become a bad person, said Song Jung. Song Jung advised him to decide in which direction he wanted to go. In the gym. The second uncle was taking Du Park to the first uncle to introduce him to the first uncle. But before going, he takes out his trimmer to shave Shin's remaining hair. While Du Park was wondering how he was gonna save his hair when it was already shaved. In a few moments, the second uncle was done and left after that. We see Shin lying on the ground with all the hairs on his body being shaved. After they were gone, Shin's friends ran to him to wake him up. When he wakes up, he finds his clothes and wonders why his body is so smooth. When he realized what they had done to him, he screamed his heart out. He was the only one kept in the dark. They were all in on it together. The friends that he trusted, Park Du, someone whom he trusted and followed around as if he was his real brother, the Super Alliance as well. They all planned and made him the prey. He starts laughing like a maniac. His friends were wondering if he had gone insane. It worked out great he says, because now he knew who the people he needed to get rid of. He ordered his lackeys to get to work as he was going to take his revenge on everybody. He is the type of person where if he dies, doesn't go down alone. At this point, Shin was the most dangerous because he had nothing to lose anymore, and he was going to make them realize what it's like to lose everything. The Super Alliance executives were wondering whose side they should pick, because Kenji had declared war on the Super Alliance and Du Park was also backing him up. The news of Kenji beating Shin spread like wildfire, but his declaring war on the Super Alliance spread even quicker. The news also spread throughout the Firebag gang. The uncles threw a party to celebrate this victory and introduced Du Park to the rest of the family. In the school, some students were afraid to go near Kenji, and some who couldn't accept Kenji as the new boss of the school were starting to gather. But they all hated Kenji unanimously. Kenji was sitting on a bench thinking he had become pretty bad. So Sujin should like him now. He was going to confess his feelings to her. He called her but she didn't pick up the phone. She always picked up her phone before. So he worried that something was wrong. He wanted to tell her how bad he had become as soon as possible. He'd slowly started to go out of the school during school hours. The real man's work no longer felt awkward as well. He was getting used to spitting. He was doing everything a gangster should do. When he got home, he was surprised to see the home empty. When he goes to look for them, his father welcomes him. Kenji was stunned to see his father again so soon. His father hugs him and lets him know how proud of him he is. He starts crying while telling him how he has waited his entire life for this moment. It was the first time in 10 years his father was hugging him. Kenji was relieved to be in that moment no matter what he felt about the whole situation. The party starts and his father offers him the drink he had prepared for him himself. They were very excited for this moment, but Kenji told them that the drink was disgusting. His father was really disappointed in him. To make him happy, Kenji tried to force himself to drink but his father told him that he had already done enough. The boss goes outside to take a breather. The second uncle goes with him. The boss thanks the first uncle for taking care of his son. Just then, the fire gang's right-hand man Lee Saiwon comes there looking for the boss. The boss told him that he was staying and went inside. Saiwon mucks the first uncle asking him if he has already recovered from the slap. He further mucks him saying he was just a babysitter. But the first uncle just stares at him and doesn't say a thing. He went inside which makes Saiwon even more annoyed. The boss knew something was going on between the two of them and ordered the second uncle to make up with Saiwon. The boss asked him to send Kenji to the rooftop alone. When Kenji came to the rooftop, the boss expressed his concern that he might go back to being kind again, so he needed to make sure that didn't happen. Kenji was shocked to see all of his award certificates. The father ordered him to burn all of them. Kenji was baffled to hear that. Kenji knew that this was his past and he needed to leave it behind. But even then, these were evidence of the kind acts he performed for the last 10 years. But he burns all of them down and puts his past behind him. His father was proud of him and was extremely happy. After his father was gone, 
Kenji mustered up the courage to call Sujin again to tell her how he was not the same person now. But before he could call her, she called her instead. Kenji started to panic and didn't know what to do. But then he realized the one who was calling him was not Sujin, but Yeji. He thought if she was calling this late at night, it must be something urgent. But Yeji just wanted to have a casual conversation with him. As Kenji was about to hang up the phone, she said she had something urgent to tell him. She was coming over to his house, but Kenji asked her to meet at the park nearby. But Yeji wasn't gonna listen to him. She was already on her way. Kenji tries to sneak out of the house, but the second uncle catches him. He asks him if he is going to meet a girl. When Kenji says yes, the other uncles also wake up and start asking him all sorts of questions. So Kenji just runs away without taking any of them with him. When he got outside, he found Yeji was already waiting for him outside to pick him up. But Kenji scolds her thinking she stole someone else's motorbike and didn't even have a driving license, but assured him that it was her bike and offered him a ride to the park. But Kenji proposes they should just work to the park. Yeji was slightly disappointed. They arrive at the park where Yeji reminded him how it was the same park where they first met. How he threw a stone at her that day. They remember what had happened that day and laugh together. Kenji puts his hands on her forehead to see if the stone leaves any scar. But Yeji got flustered and started blushing. She got up without saying anything and started her motorbike as soon as possible. Kenji apologizes to her for anything he might have done that offended her and asked her not to leave. But she didn't listen to him. If she had not left when she did, Kenji might have heard her heart beating so fast. On the other hand, Shin had started to gather students for his revenge, but Shorty and Big Head call him crazy for going before them again and leave. But some students couldn't accept the humiliation and wanted to do something about it. They had a total of six people now, but the others weren't confident that they could take on Song Jun even though there were six of them. So they asked Shin if had any plans in mind. Shin points out how they had more weaknesses and how they had much more to lose. We see Song Jun and his little sister enjoying her food and playing. The next day at school, Kenji was worried because Yeji wasn't picking up his phone, and the same was with Sujin. He encountered the student council president on the way. The president takes him with him to tell him something important. He tells Kenji how the chief teacher wanted him gone, and how he was proposing to the principal to transfer him. Kenji was confused because he didn't even do anything for that to happen. But the reason was pretty. Him being the son of a gangster was enough. But the president understands that it wasn't his fault that he was born into a gangster family. On the contrary. He admires him for turning out the way he did even though his surroundings made it difficult for him. That's why he advised Kenji to be the face of the school violence eradication campaign. That way he could beat the bullies without getting in trouble with teachers. Kenji had no reason to decline the proposal so he goes along with it. They both go to meet the chief teacher in the teacher's office. The student council president told the chief teacher how he could get rid of all the bullies with the help of Kenji if he let him be the front of the school violence committee. The teacher found this to be an absurd idea. But Kenji asked him to trust him because he'd never done anything wrong. And if didn't believe him, he should call a parent-teacher meeting. Everyone in the office was surprised to hear it. The chief teacher was out of the spot and couldn't dismiss them without a good reason. He told them he'd think about it. In the class, Kenji was wondering if he'd be considered a kind person for beating the bullies or if he'd become an even worse person. Sujin was not in the class as well which made him even more anxious thinking she was in some kind of trouble. After school, Kenji and Songjun went together and Shin and his lackeys followed them. After a while, they realized that they were not heading towards Kenji's house, meaning they were headed towards Song Jun's house. Shin was thrilled after realizing that. They arrived at Song Jun's house where her sister was waiting for him. Kenji was surprised to see her calling Song Jun her big brother. The sister revealed how he asked her big brother to keep it a secret from him. And she was also the one who asked Song Jun to help Kenji as Kenji had saved her once from some bullies. That's why Song Jun was more involved in his matter. They both thank Kenji for helping her and compliment him. After they explained everything to him, they left for the gym to train. Meanwhile, Shin was watching from the shadows. His eyes were on his sister. Laugh while you can, he says. Because he'd be looking forward to what their expression would be like when they lose what's precious to them. While going to the gym, Song Jun explains how coming home after doing lower body exercises to the point where he can't even move gives him a thrill. After Song Jun was gone for training, Kenji couldn't resist but started to worry about Su Jun again. He tried to call her again. But this time as well she didn't pick up. He didn't know if he should report this to the police or search for himself. When he got home, Kenji asked his second uncle for help. The second asked him if she had a boyfriend. They told him that both of them must be doing that. That's why they weren't picking up. Kenji couldn't hear them talking about both of them like that and ran away from them. Even though he was terrified of confronting what he might find them doing at her house, 
he still decided to go look for her at her house. But even at her house, there was no one. He wondered if she went to her father's place. But he was confident she would never do that. Not without telling him. Yeri was feeling down. Seeing her like that her friend asked her what happened with Kenji and her. I don't think Kenji is interested in me said Yeri, because he wasn't playing hard to get around her. While they were planning their next move, Kenji called her. Surprised, she picks up the phone. Kenji starts by saying he has something to tell her. She was flattered and asked him what he wanted to say. But he was just calling her to borrow her bike. He told her how he was going to search for Sujin. Yeri reminds him that she has a boyfriend and that he should look for her not him. Kenji listened to her advice and hung up the call. Yeri was really annoyed. Even though Kenji listened to her, he still couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. On the way home, he meets with Dayun, Songjun's sister again. She bought him ice cream from her allowance. We see Shai Jiel, who was happy to find Kenji there too, creeping on them. He was going to beat Kenji and Dayun after kidnapping her. But not everyone was on board with this plan. They were happy to beat Kenji. But beating a kid was going too far even for them. But one of the guys agrees with Shin and calls them weak for backing down. He reminds them that the reason they were playing this dirty was because they couldn't get their hands on Song Jun. But those guys would rather be called than beat up a child. Shin was getting frustrated and wished that Song Jun gets crippled somehow so that they could just directly ambush him. And his prayers were heard. Song Jun was coming back from the gym after doing some extensive lower body exercises. To the point that he started limping and couldn't even work properly. This was their one in a million chance. It was like God was on their side. Everyone was on board with this. They pick up their bats and march ahead, while Kenji and Dayun are playing in a park. Song Jun started climbing the stairs and he was enjoying the thrill when Shin attacked him from behind. He managed to block the first attack, but realized he had no strength in his leg, so he couldn't dodge the second one. The rest of them attacked him as well and brought him to his knees. Song Jun counted there were six of them, but he was still confident that he could take them on. He started throwing hands and starts taking them down one by one. He could see their moves files away. He blocked one of the guy's attacks and asked him if they had done anything to Dayun. But the guy didn't know if he was talking about a person or a detergent powder. Song Jun deduces that she is safe and is relieved for a moment when Shin attacks him from behind. He was on his knees again and almost got knocked out. That had been better because they beat him until he was unconscious. Kenji and Dayun got back from the park. When they got there, they saw Song Jun getting kidnapped. Dayun was terrified. Kenji yells at Shin to stop, but he gives him the middle finger and leaves in his van. Dayun couldn't stop crying but Kenji promised her that he would bring him back safely. Kenji was holding his anger back for the shake of Dayun, but he was fuming with anger and wanted to crush Shin once and for all. He gets Dayun to safety and goes home to ask his uncles for help, but they were all drunk and asleep. He thinks of getting the police for help, but as he was about to make a call, he got a call from Sujin. He immediately picked up the phone, but on the other side of the phone was known other than Shin. We see that he has her as a hostage. Shin threatened Kenji not to bring his uncles or police. Otherwise he'd hurt Sujin pretty badly. All the while Sujin just sat there without saying anything. Kenji couldn't believe how low Shin was playing. He was furious and just wanted to beat the crap out of him and he was going to do that alone. So he decided to go there on his own, without his uncles or the police. 